it's now the end of May. That means that all my unusual bigger bills have now been paid for the year. All my insurances have been paid. Um, any, like, my business insurance has been paid this month. That's the last thing that I have to pay for this year that's different. So I thought that I would do an end of May money roundup of how much I earn, how much I've spent. There's all different ways that I can look at this. So I thought that I would break it up into different areas to explain how I do my finances. And I'm going to start by looking at income. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to put things up on the screen so you can see what's going on there. So my income for May was £1,172.78. And, and that is broken up as follows. So firstly, we have YouTube, which paid me £140.92. I have my small cleaning job, which is only eight and a half hours a week. That pays £439.50. I had the payments that I had for the medical screenings that I did. That came to £145. I received £175.78 from Universal Credit this month. I made £4.25 on Vinted. Um, I received £31 in total from Coffee, which is the donation site that people can donate to for my YouTube work. I made £75.03 in interest, and from surveys and market research, I earned £161.30. And that's fairly standard in terms of where all my different incomes come from, but they vary from month to month. Um, there are very few of them that remain the same each month. At the moment, the interest remains the same because I only have interest coming from several savings accounts. And that's because in April I had a, a fixed bond matured. So anyone who will have seen my last Universal Credit update will have been confused by my interest amounts. And I didn't explain why it looked like it looked because it was something I think it was something like five hundred and thirty two pounds of interest for my last universal credit claim and that is not normal so my universal credit month runs from the 21st of one month to the 20th of the next so at the end of April I had a fixed bond savings account mature and it was an account where all the interest gathers in that account and I can't get at it until the account matures at the end of the year. So that's why my interest looked so massive that month. It was something like £532. Um, but it caused an enormous amount of speculation. So instead of people looking at my other finance videos and working it out, they speculated that I must have something like, I think it was £130,000 in, in, um, in savings to make that kind of interest. I don't. It's just a one-off. Um, why on earth people would think that I had £130,000 of savings, be running a frugal channel and claiming universal credit? I have no idea. And I think a lot of it is because people just, they watch one video and they knee-jerk reaction to it. Go back and look at other videos. I've done these financial audits before, which explain everything. If you look at my interest over the course of the whole of 2024, it's going to be about £1,363, give or take, depending on what happens with the interest rates on my easy savers. Uh, so, like the easy access savers, where the rates are more variable. I have one more fixed bond account coming out in, I think it's the 1st of July, and then that's all my high interest savings gone. We're back down to, um, I have a couple of accounts. I have one account with a 5% rate, I have one account with a 7% rate, and then my easy access is 4.90. So interest is not looking as great this year on average and a lot of that money that's coming out of those fixed bond accounts that now isn't going to be earning that well I am putting into my ISA and my pension pot um, because I'd rather it worked harder on the long term now so yeah so my income comes out to £1,172.78 I'm going to talk about my outgoings in 
because I have an average month and then I have the actual month. So for this month, I'm just going to run through what's actually been spent. So my gas and electric bill this month was £41 and one pence. I pay a direct debit of £40 a month and that accrues over the course of the year to get me through the winter. So £41 and one pence of energy used, but that does also include the rip-off that is the standing charge and the VAT that goes on top. So I use very little energy. My gas now is restricted to just my gas hob, that's all I use, and my electric is pretty minimal, and I have LED bulbs and things like that, so I don't use a lot of energy. I try not to use my oven as much as possible, which is electric, and when I do, I bulk use it, but I'm probably only using my oven a couple of times a month because I mostly cook on my gas hob because it's cheaper. That's the way it is. Um, council tax is £110 per month. I pay Peugeot £26.62 for my service package. So I pay into a service and MOT package with Peugeot. Um, I do that because it just makes my life easier. That price works over the course of three years minus three months. And it means that every year when I take my car in for its service and MOT, provided there's nothing wrong with it, I come out not spending any money. And it also gives me discounts on parts and things like that. Um, they've been really good to me. I had one incident last year where I went in for a couple of tyres to be done. And they uh, one of the new tyres split when they were putting it on, on the car. And I had to go back in the afternoon to pick up the car later than expected. And they knocked 20 quid off my bill. So... You know, I don't mind that. It's less hassle. I've owned a lot of second-hand and third-hand and fourth-hand cars in my time and been shafted by several small mechanics in my time, been ripped off, and I don't want it. I would rather stick with something that I can actually trust because whenever I have, I have work done with Peugeot, there's never a problem. There is never, ever a problem. And I would much rather that than have to put up the hassle and the worry, particularly as I do very long journeys on my own, long motorway journeys. I go off and do my car camping. I do not want to be driving a car that's not reliable. Anyway, so that aside, uh, my water bill, which is with United Utilities, is £14.40 per month at the moment. And again, I am really careful with how much water I use. I don't waste any water whatsoever. Smarty, which provides me my mobile, and I don't have Wi-Fi, broadband, whatever. I do everything on 4G. So my bill is £18.75, and I split that half between personal and half of it goes on my business self-assessment. Um, petrol this month. Normally, I wouldn't put petrol in more than once, a couple of times every three months, and that's because I do the long journeys down to my parents every three months but because I was going away on my car camping trip right at the beginning of May I decided to fill up the tank I don't like playing chicken with whether or not I've got enough petrol to get home so I just filled up the tank and it all works itself out eventually because I won't I came back with like half a tank of petrol um, and that most of that will still be in the tank by the time I next go away which means you know, it's still already half full. So I paid £40.72 for petrol. My food this month came to £33.66, which is higher than usual, um, but it's kind of the way it is. The, the, the one thing that kind of stands out in terms of bigger expenses for me this month was my, what I call my everything else category which is anything that doesn't fit into that. So that's discretionary spending, basically. This month has been a more expensive month. And there are various little things. I include household cleaning products on that. So anything that's, that I buy from the supermarket that isn't food. So there's little bits on there for, you know, cleaning products, things like that. The big expenses I've had this month, which are one-offs, unusual, are, um, I bought those Skechers trainers at TK Maxx, that was my little treat, they came to £29.99, really glad I bought them, my feet don't hurt half as much now, um, it was really a necessary rather than a want, because 
I was starting to get into quite a lot of pain and I had to renew my driving license which was £21.75 so that's the bulk of why that's more expensive than normal there are other little things so um, you know any healthcare products and things I will tend to get from the supermarket or from Poundland there's a few things in there a couple of birthday cards I've posted you know even a second um, a second class birthday card costs you nearly a quid to send now when I was in Keswick, I treated myself to an ice cream that cost four pounds and these things add up really really fast so that's why I've now got this month's um, everything else total was 84 pounds 91 which is just seems like such a lot of money for me so that's um, this month the only other two things that I pay out for regularly now and I don't really class them as spending because it's just moving money around rather than actual spending but there's £25 that goes onto my ISA every month now and £192 for the pension now I know with the pension um, I can't get access to the money so theoretically the money's gone but it's still my money so I don't usually count those as in my figures because it's still my money it's just in a different place so my average month I, you may have noticed I haven't included rent on that and that's because I pay my rent every six months because I don't pass any of the credit checks for rent um, so I pay my rent is 600 a month I pay two amount I pay it in um, mid-April and mid-October and that's my rent for the year so I don't tend to count it on my monthly amount because it hasn't physically gone out that month. But if you were breaking up all my income, uh, my outgoings over the course of a year, it would work out as £600. So if you look at an average where everything's spaced out over the course of um, the year, I've got my phone at 1875, Persia is 2662, council tax is 110, water is £14.40. My direct debit with my energy supply is £40 a month. My rent would be £600 if I was paying it every month. Um, the ISA 25, the pension 192 And the petrol, so with, with the food, petrol and everything else, I average it out over the course of a year. So if I averaged out everything I've spent on food so far this year my average monthly food bill will be £25.47 which is it much higher than last year but last year was a bit of a blip because I did really well with cash back and gift cards and basically free food it's not working out the same this year there's less of everything and of course food prices are still going up so that's what my average is now so far this year, £25.47 a month per month for food. My petrol, when I look at what I've spent so far this year and I average that out per month, I've spent £23.24 on petrol. And most of that is long journeys down to my parents because my parents live a long way from me and I go down there every three months for two weeks and that's where really where the petrol gets eaten up. Um, and then the everything else category so far averages out at £69.69 .69 per month. Um, and then of course you've got the ISA and the pension. So my average all out, if you treated everything as a monthly thing, will be £1,145.17. If I don't include the ISA and the pension, because like I said, they... It's still my money, it's just my money being moved around. That would bring it down to £928.17. And if I don't include the rent, because I pay it every six months, and that money is sitting in savings accounts waiting to be spent, that would come. That would bring all my monthly bills, what's left, down to £328.17 per month. So... My income for this year looks like it's going to be around about 15500 and my outgoings are averaging just under 12000 for the year. I've made money. This is, this is better than I have been for a while. So last year was a better year than the year before. The year before that, I was pretty much living on savings. So I've worked hard to 
change that around and that's because of all the side hustles I do which is all the surveys and things like that and of course some of the side hustles are things like you know gift cards and cashback apps which helps to keep my food bill down so that is what my ins and outs looks like for May and it's not it's not too bad a month um, things will calm down now because as I say all my big bills have been paid my last big bill which was which went out at the beginning of this month was my business insurance and over the the years that I've been in business I have been insured with simply business but I've reached the point now where I cannot justify the cost they have add-ons which I can't remove from the insurance which I don't need so you have to have either public liability or um, I've forgotten what the other liability is professional professional indemnity and you can't unbolt that from your policy which meant that my renewal was going to be I think it was 337 pounds this year and it was just pointless I my business has taken quite a hit since COVID I did well in COVID the COVID year 2020 and then everything kind of slipped after that as things have changed and I've allowed my business to kind of sleep while I've been focusing on things that make more money are easier to make more money at because the bottom line for me at the moment is just making sure that the bills were paid that I've been able to start investing in my retirement that sort of thing so I haven't worried about the business because everything else is making me the money that I need and I'm going to then focus the second half of this year I'm going to focus on how I revive the business um, even if that's possible um, I know that in the news at the moment they've said oh like inflation's down which actually strictly isn't true and businesses are still going under people are still losing their jobs just because it's not in the news anymore it doesn't mean it's not happening and things are slowly still getting more expensive and people's wages still aren't matching it. So nothing is getting better. So there's no reason why I should suddenly be making loads of money again at my business because people still don't have the money to spend. And I'm not going to push that. I would rather continue to enjoy my creativity at my leisure and find my work elsewhere. I've enjoyed finding my work elsewhere I've st still enables me to be autonomous I haven't had to go back to a full-time job I've learned new skills I've learned how to, how to use a video editor I started a YouTube channel the things that have that are different things that I never thought I would ever do and I'm now doing at, on a regular basis so it has been advantageous to me I've learned new skills I've learned different ways of doing things and I really like that all my income comes from different pots so if one pot goes down the others are still there so I don't like the idea of all my income coming from one place it's very risky now to rely on one job for all your income I find I think that's quite a dangerous thing to do now because you cannot rely on employers you cannot rely on businesses no one's got your best interests at heart except you um, so I feel much safer doing things this way so that is my overall month um, I don't think I have forgotten anything if I do I will tag it onto the end of this um, I hope the screens have been useful um, I have loads of videos on how I save money go to my playlists look for my frugal life playlist look for my frugal cooking playlists and I'm always doing different things every week or every month when I do my day in the life week in the life there are always some hauls in there which show how much money I save on shelf price on food now in terms of my food um, if I had bought all my food this month at shelf price, so full price, taking it off the shelf, I would have spent £105.76. 
what I actually spent was £33.66 and that's a combination of I don't pay full price for anything I only buy things on yellow sticker discounts so I go at certain times of the week when I know the discounts are out I also earn some of my income um, in gift cards I have two survey sites where I earn nectar points which means that when I go to Sainsbury's I can buy my food for free and I also use three cashback sites to get free or discounted branded products so I use Shopmium, Checkout Smart and Green Genie and they're not doing as well at the moment I think brands are more reluctant to give away things for free but there is still the odd thing and it just keeps food a little bit more interesting when you get to buy a branded something that you couldn't normally afford or you didn't want to pay for because it would take you over your budget so that's an enormous saving on food £105.76 down to £33.66 so people who say it's not worth shopping for yellow stickers it really is if you need to get your food bill down and you are able to shop at the right times which means first thing on a Sunday morning is always good um, and evenings it depends on where you live it depends on the demographic but generally I would say if you go in after 6 6 30 in the evening and work out which evenings work for you some evenings are better than others I find that Tuesdays and Wednesdays tend to be quite good but I tend to go in those evenings because um, I'm out at that time anyway what I should do for a probably a more encompassing experiment is go every evening at 6.30 and see what it's like but I don't need that much food there's only me there so that's it I hope you found that useful uh, any questions any comments do add them below and do do subscribe and do have a look at my playlists because there are lots of videos there that are relevant particularly if you're trying to save money look at the the the, the frugal life channel and look at the frugal cooking if you're trying to lower your food bills um, there's all sorts of things on there which you can implement in some way or another to suit your lifestyle so i hope that's been useful um yeah add comments like subscribe all the usual stuff and i will speak to you again soon bye bye